What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today we are taking a look at a new knife from Shergoroff, a new color of this knife from Shergoroff. This is the new Hattie Gen 3 um, white colored uh, MRBS M390 Hattie. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, I should have just launched this one if uh, my brain is firing on all cylinders. If not, then uh, I apologize. Um, just a reminder, this is a casual conversation, like anything, we're going to talk about the knife, not go into excruciating detail about angles and whatnot, we're just showing the knife the angles, well, like we're having a coffee shop style discussion. Beautiful, beautiful knife. It really reminds me of the uh, recently launched F3 Arum. Um, just a reminder that, uh, you know, check out my website, bladezilla.ca where I have a number of Shiro's on uh, on there, ready to go. And uh, actually I just got, I don't have any more of these, but the Arum that I was talking about, which we would be comparing about, it would be that knife there. So lots of Shiro's on the site. Please visit bladezilla.ca. Nice little shout out. There's a reason you don't see ads on this video. You see it in them and I apologize for that. Or maybe I don't, but anyway. Uh, let's talk about this knife. So let's start things off, get some measurements. And I must say the action on this particular one is extra smooth. Uh, da -da. We are coming in at eight and three quarter inches, maybe less depending on how your eyes are aligned. A blade length of about four inches, just there under sharpened with a nice M390 cut. And the handle, which I've been getting asked for, four and three quarters. So there you go. You've had three different measurements taken all in front of you for the taking. Play with it with you will. Um, comparison, oh, no, 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 no. Let's do weight. Let's back it up. Gotta do weight. So let's throw the scale on here. I always forget. So let's fire this guy up. Apparently that cloth weighs 0.2 ounces. Uh, four, four even depending. Remember, plus, minus, whatever. So around four, I think claim is like 3.9 on these. I think, maybe 3.8, but around there. And for my Canadian brethren, 113. There you go. So there's your weight. It is a very light knife for its size, right? Almost a perfect, almost a perfect ounce to blade inch ratio, which is kind of the gold standard. I don't know if you guys have heard that before, but it's often referred to as, you know, a three inch blade, you want to weigh three ounce, three and a half inch blade, you want to weigh three and a half ounce, four inch blade, you want it to weigh four ounce. So um, I can't really recall who initially came up with that, but I, for some reason I was thinking it was Nick, uh, Nick Shabazz, which everyone should know by now. Um, in terms of the knife and size, this is obviously, uh, this is second from the top in uh, Shirogorov line. Uh, we will compare it with the Stellar, which we should all have seen by now. And my little lonely neon. This is the last neon I have right now. And uh, I've got I've got some coming, but uh, this is obviously I always have to use my own knives to compare it with because I can't uh, be busting open stock. So. There it is, and remember the angle of the camera, how I'm kind of shooting down and back. So if I take, for example, let's take the smallest and biggest. At that angle, they look okay, pretty similar, but if I move this down into the middle of the frame, and I move that away from the camera, suddenly I think that's more of a true representation of size. So that is how I would prefer to measure it versus like this, if you see what I'm saying. But anyway, it's a it's a nice size knife. Uh, it's a four inch blade, but carries more like a three and a half inch blade, in my opinion. And we'll talk about that. But um, the big thing is, I wish I had some F3 Arams to show this beautiful new scale. And they're calling this white uh, in color. And to me, it looks a little, it kind of looks like it's got some quartz in there, some black, some grays, like it's actually a really full-on scale, um, given that this is obviously their high-end production level knife, the top end, they've gotten no details 
that are undone here. Everything's done really, really well. As you can see, perfect centering, which is, it's a sure go off. You don't worry about details like that. The action is smooth, silk, like look at this. Like super smooth. It floats, oh, not even broken in. Just feels so good. Um, I've got a handful of these waiting to go out, so they'll uh, they'll hit the site when this video goes up uh, to try to time things, but it looks real, real sharp. Um, what else can we kind of compare this guy with? You know, everyone always wants to know, what, you know, what's it like compared to this? What's it like compared to that? Uh, well, actually, you know what? Let's keep that blade in to start things off. Let's do a little... Uh, Let's do a little lineup here. So we, we have this. This is called the Hattie White. We've uh, seen a Hattie Blue on the site. I've had that up for a few weeks now. I actually just sent out a few of those today. Uh, this guy here. So a few of those went out. And then a Hattie Red. This one I think is the... I don't know if I have two more of these left or not. But anyway, I've got the, the Red. And then these are kind of the main ones I have. And then I've got this Hattie CCKS edition that uh, is not on the site or anything, but it is my personal knife, but it is all black. Now, what's so cool here is I feel like Sure Grow Off is quietly doing a little bit of a, you know, set edition here. Because, uh, you know, we all, we've all seen kind of their F3s in the Aquatic, the Terrace, the Aram, and the Ignis, how they kind of did the four different colors. Well, I'm kind of seeing that same thing here which is kind of cool because I feel like this is the wind or this is very similar to the wind or the Aram in that it's black and white uh, less depth though than those those knives but still super detailed this I'd kind of put more in line with the aquatic this more with the Ignis and this one I don't know what the heck this is I guess you can kind of say terracy but it is a special edition so it's S90V with some cool colors on it and I uh, picked this guy up a long time ago, actually, if it wants to focus. Oh man, I'm sorry. Yeah, picked this one up a while ago, but uh, it is a special edition. I will definitely do a video on this at some point uh, before um, before I get rid of it. it I, I, it's just such a nice knife, S90V, with that cool kind of copper gold backspacer, which looks so nice. And uh, I will say this though, like yes, it's got a cooler blade than these other three, um, but the carbon isn't as nearly as cool. It's very basic, which you can hopefully see, and that it's kind of just two-dimensional. Whereas all three of these guys, it's uh, it's they're at a different level in my opinion. Um, particularly the two blue, or I guess uh, the blue and the white now. The red, if we want to take a look close here, it's got a lot of layers to it, but as you move it around, and you can see I've got some fingerprints on this one, but as you move it around, it's got a lot of layers to it, but it's very subtle. It's still got some red in there. It's got some black. All three obviously have the same steel and, and milling, etc. It's very similar that way. But just a very nice, solid, subtle red kind of knife. Really, really good. It'd be even better if I didn't have uh, fingerprints on it. So I'll try to do my best next time to not have any in here, but there you go. I should probably take care of that. So there you go. So yeah, lots of depth to it. This guy is, uh, when I got this in, I was blown away because not only is there layers in the carbon, but there's also like little metallic flakes in here that really pop out of the blue in a really, really nice way. And it's, you know, I've got a, a fixed light on top of my uh, kind of a light stand here. So I, if I had more than one source of light, I could kind of show you that. But uh, I guess by moving this around, you can kind of start to see some of the flakes in there. If you're in 4K, you can kind of see it. And it's, uh, it's a beautiful knife. Between these two, I, I really like the blue. But then the white one came in. And I was just, at first I was like, oh, white, on paper you see it, oh, white, I don't know, I wonder what this is going to look like. And, uh, and then, you, then you look at this, and you go, oh, baby, because you get a little bit of the flakes in here, you get that black carbon that's deep in the background, 
And then you almost get like these snow-capped mountains that pop out of it at certain angles. Beautiful. And I should also say this, uh, one thing that this knife does the others don't, is when you rotate the knife sideways and you see the layers of the carbon, it really pops. And I'll show you the other two. See how muted that is? Top of this, obviously beautiful. The side, it's very muted, okay? Same with this. The side, very muted. Okay? But this guy, because it has white in it, it just pops right out on the carbon. And, and I didn't expect that, right? Because I think I opened it up and I looked at it and I saw this first. I'm like, oh man, that is a cool color. And then you rotate it, you see the deep carbon in there. Oh, that is a beautiful knife. These, uh, they, like, Sheer Goroff, they are absolutely knocking the production stuff out of the park. Like, they obviously start at their value end, which would be like a F95 uh, NL or a Quantum Ursus line. They're killing it with those knives, like, tremendous value. They're, they're made better than a Chris Reeves at a similar price point. Let's leave it at that. Um, and speaking of Chris Reeves, the Hattie is based on their F95. Okay, so we're gonna put we're gonna put these just up here for now. Uh, but yeah, the Hattie is based on their F95. So let's grab uh, let's grab a turtle here if I can find one. Actually, just had a Hattie and a turtle go out today, which is cool. Um, so if you look at this turtle, this is obviously a blue anno turtle, okay? It's the exact same knife, okay? Profile-wise, uh, use of material-wise, it's identical, okay? So speaking of Chris Reeves, the F95 is kind of like Shirogorov's Sabenza. I would kind of, I would say that. Like, it's, that is their model. They've been around for over 10 years. And it's, uh, it's their go-to, you know, if, if a new customer is coming to me and saying, hey, I want to get a flavor of Sheer Goroff, I've got some funds to play with, I'd say get yourself an F95, and, uh, and then, you know, if you want a Turtle or an NL, whatever, but it'll give you every ounce of what a Sheer Goroff is in this knife, okay? The difference is, between that and the Hattie, now you're removing that front scale which is traditionally titanium, and now you're making it carbon. So now it weighs, you know, almost a full ounce, not quite, but almost a full ounce lighter. And that's what the Hattie is. Otherwise, ergonomically, material-wise, they're the same knife. Same angles, same ergos, same blah, blah, blah. Obviously, there's minimal differences in the backspacer and some little tweaks here and there, but for the most part, they're the same design, okay? But this guy is almost an ounce lighter, which is just so cool. It still has the, uh, you know, the, uh, a different style, kind of stonewashed. I think it's a stonewashed backspacer, and I believe it's made of titanium. But yeah, that looks like, looks like I think it's uh, stonewash, which is beautiful. The lanyard hole is still kind of tucked in there, and I always like to show this because people have been asking. So if we take a Stellar, and you see how they put their lanyard hole on here on the back, and it's see-through, for a lot of people that's an eyesore, okay? So what they do is they build it into the backspacer. So when it's built into the backspacer like that from the side, it looks like it doesn't have any you know, holes, it's, not, it's, it's appealing visually, but functionally, you still have the ability to you know, put your your little uh, paracord through there and uh, run a bead or two or three or five or a hundred. Please don't run a hundred. Um, and, and, and that's cool. Uh, speaking of beads, I completely forgot and I actually don't have these on the site. What would I do without editing software? Um, yeah, so uh, speaking of beads, I'm actually gonna start, uh, I brought in a little batch of a couple beads here to just put in the store and see more than anything how they do. Uh, see if there's interest, but uh, as far as I know, I don't think anyone in Canada is selling these beads and uh, This one is a 2023 uh, Limited edition one so you kind of have the established 2023 on the top there In some cool writing. I don't know how close the camera's gonna pick up on this if I get super close but yeah 
there's a cool bead to throw on and actually would uh, match this one pretty cool, hey? Kind of like a radiator pattern. So there you go. I might do a video on this, like a quick five minute video with a, a macro lens to kind of show that thing a little closer, but uh, super cool. We'll see, uh, see who wants a couple beads and if not, then uh, we'll clear them out pretty quick. But that uh, is another conversation for another day. So there we go. Um, in terms of the knife itself, ergonomically it's identical to both other Hatties here. Um, I'm a six foot three guy, I've got extra large hands and the Hattie fits them perfectly. It, uh, you know, jimping matches the backspacer really, really nicely. As you can see, maybe I'll put it that way to show that. You can see the patterns are a mirror image of each other, look really cool. But it's still practical. It's not as bitey as like a Sebenza jimping, but uh, still super, super nice. And it gives you options to choke up on the blade as you go down because it's all flat on top, kind of like an F95 Zero blade. Super standard grind on it. Thin, slicey. You've got the Shiragorov logo put onto the edge there with, uh, I think, some anodizing. I don't know how much that's on the blade, but... I wonder if you could brush it off or not. I don't think so, but and then on the other side, M390 looks sharp. You know, it's a it's a it's a bread and butter steel at this point. Everybody loves it. It's uh, just kind of like the gold standard for high end production. Good stainless, good end retention, um, good enough stainless, I guess, and uh, you know, fairly tough. So it's it's good. It's a solid steel for the price point, and it's you know. Do we want to see LMAX more? Do we want to see Vanix more? Uh, yeah, it'd be cool, but M390 is kind of the bread and butter on the uh, production line. So anyway, so ergonomically it's good. I can always have an extra finger if I wanted to, if I'm hanging out in Mexico and uh, they find some more aliens with six fingers, they'd probably fit this knife quite well. Hotspot wise, the clip hides really nicely in the palm of my hand. I'm a righty, obviously and it, it fits in there quite nice. No issues. I talked about this, but if you want, you can choke up to do fine work, not a problem. The flipper, where am I going here? Not the flipper, there we go. So yeah, that flipper tab kind of works into the handle, as you can see, and kind of acts as a bit of a guard against the choil, which is nice. And then the, um, the lock bar, as well is beautifully beautifully milled and machined as you can kind of see in here it's the kind of thing that unless you're really looking at it you don't notice how intricate the work is you have an over travel stop slash metal lock bar insert and remember so your over, tra over travel stop is to prevent this from passing the frame and kind of over time warping that bend in the bar your um, lock bar insert is uh, to fine tune between the M390 and the titanium frame. You have to usually put a material in between so to prevent it from kind of getting lock stick and uh, uh, getting a little gunky in there. Um, is it needed? Not necessarily. If you look at like uh, my Sebenza here, I don't, I don't think they're doing anything there. Yeah. So there's your Sebenza, which is kind of your gold standard for a lot of guys for USA made knives. And as you can see, there's, you know, there's nothing in between the knife and uh, and the frame, or the uh, I think this one's S45, S45 and the tie frame. So you know, you put a material in there to kind of tune that material. Now they are doing that, I believe, on the Zon now, though, the Um Num Zon, or maybe I'm wrong. No, it's the Over Travel, Over Travel they're doing on the Zon. Sorry, I'm just looking at it. I can show you. Probably make more sense if I show you the uh, the Zon. <laughs> but yeah, same thing. Just tie in metal. One thing with the uh, the Chris Reeves as well is like, look how much engagement there is on that, eh? That's so much, not, like that's crazy. But they are the uh, the OG frame lock company, obviously. The Reeves. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, it's the little differences on this. If you look around the knife and you look around the frame, you look around the, the carbon scale, it's just really, really well thought out. There's a lot of subtle machining work 
a lot of rounding, no hot spots. Something like the flipper tab, when you fire it out, you can see where your finger ends up in this little track here, and it's all smoothed out. See what I'm saying? Right behind it here. Just beautiful. The tolerances are just nuts. Um, if you like the F95 knife, you're going to love this. Um, it runs on multi-row bearings, this particular Hattie. Multi-row bearings, and I always say this, but I'll repeat myself. Um, think of it as like a pinwheel pattern of three bearings, three ball bearings on a track. Kind of in a curve. Almost looking like the, the rays of a sun around a circle. Whereas most knives are kind of just like a standard you know, ball on a track. And Shiro does do that with their single row bearings, which uh, I've got a few knives here with single row bearings. Uh, primarily, the one that feels the best, in my opinion, would be this guy right now, and it's because I've flipped it so many times. But this is a uh, Quantum Monkey Edge Frag, and uh, my first Shiro I ever got. But insanely smooth, like insanely smooth. Right, controlled, and uh, a lot of people think single row bearings are not the best. I think they feel really, really good when they're correctly set up. And multi row bearings, as you can see, oh man, that's smooth. It's just, you know, what's so cool is when I when I show you this knife and I put it at an angle like this, you're like, oh, it's you think it's like held so firmly there, but it's like. I'm holding this straight up, it can still hold that spot, okay? But like a little whoop, and it moves. Like it's just, they float home. And that's the Shirogoroff feel, is the blade is not drop shutty like a Grimsmo. It, uh, it just floats smoothly and controlledly, like you can't even believe. It's uh, just something you have to experience. And once you experience it on, you know, like a Hattie or an F95, you're, you're done, you're sold. You're like, I need to have 10 of these immediately not to help in the kitchen and like prepare dinner because i'm not that guy i need them to play with and flip and hopefully not cut my leg while i'm at work but uh, you know i joke but obviously it's uh you know <laughs> they are great work knives um depending you know if i'm a if i'm a guy looking for a work knife um i'd probably go with you know an f95 nl or uh quantum ursus something like that that you know, it's it's built solid, um, blade steel that you can kind of bash around and hammer on and you're not going to really worry about it. You know, a knife like this, absolutely, you can use it as a work knife. It's how much value do you want to lose on it if you damage it and start, you know, really messing it up. I, I, I don't know, some people do. Some people use their custom division knives. I know my buddy Daniel's got uh, an F3 and SCD and he uses it all the time. And uh, that's fine. It's just you've got to be comfortable knowing that, you know, there could be some loss when it's a limited edition like that. Whereas these, you know, they pump these things out in the hundreds and thousands. And, uh, you know, I don't see them, you know, they tend to hold their value pretty well because they release them in low volume uh, at a time in batches. But, you know, it's still, you know, use it. You can, you, you know, use it for a while and break even or lose a hundred bucks it's not that big of a deal so uh and easily replaceable now i can get all the hardware and parts to it it's pretty cool speaking of hardware and parts as you can see here on the uh, pivot it's obviously a proprietary style screwdriver um you know could you use a screwdriver yes do i suggest that no you know use a, a credit card or a penny Use a material that's softer than that. I promise you they're not super tight. They're not held in there too crazy. And uh, they are titanium, so it's just don't damage them. Don't beat on them. You know, these knives are uh, a work of love, a work of art. Hard-using work of art, I guess. And it's the little details, like... Look at the pocket clip. Look at all this milling here. All of it around. It's, it's through the roof. The lock bar, look at this bend on there. It's just all micro-milled to perfection. It's just nuts. You don't get this in other knives. Honestly. Oh boy. I just, I can't get over the, the side of the white. 
how much it pops out of this handle. It looks so good. And the other thing I guess is when you have these inlays on here, it just kind of protects the titanium frame, especially if it's going in and out of your uh, pocket all the time. Now, one thing I will say on this, I believe that is actually under the clip too. Yes, they do that here too. So under the clip, you can see here, see how the actually inlay goes under it as well. It, it kind of helps so when you're going in and out of your pocket all the time, and if you had a lip or an edge of that inlay right on the edge of the clip, you might over time pop it off the knife. So by putting that under, it kind of just defeats that, which is a nice little, nice little feature. Otherwise a beautiful, beautiful blade. I love drop points, they're just terrific. And I love how on this handle you kind of get a nice little, kind of like a swage up top here. And then it kind of digs down into the jimping. It's just a nice, nice little package. And I should also show you on the handle here, as we go around, see on the, above the pivot here, there's some like lines. Right, this is all machine work. So like on the other side of the handle, you can see that machining is done here. Well, they continue that machine work on the actual, on the carbon fiber to kind of match it. And and it's it's like micro milled, it still looks sharp. Same thing on the bottom here, this, that micro milling I showed you earlier, if it wants to focus, that's also found on the bottom here. There's a line there. I don't know how well this one can show. Oh, well, you can kind of see it, but there is that line here just to match the overall kind of design. It looks really good. It looks really, really good. I, uh, you know, I, I really thought the, the blue was like my go-to of the three that I have. Uh, this might be the one. I, I don't know why, but when that F3 Aram came out, I really like the pop of white that comes out of this. I really, really do. It just looks so cool. Combine that with like the almost quartz kind of pattern to it. It's just so sharp. Um, also, I was asked this. How smooth is the carbon? It's smooth, guys. It's like a flat smooth. It's not grippy like grip tape, nothing like that, but it's, it's, it's comfortable, it's smooth. It, it's no different than like plain tie. You know, people worry that it's gonna slide around or something, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's perfect. It, like, it is perfect. It's a uh, nice feel to it all around. Um, the MRBS, obviously, I had talked about this. If I can find my light, it's written on the inside here, which is a nice little touch um, instead of the SRB, which is a different kind of pattern. But they do write that on the inside here. I don't know if it's going to show that. Or not, I don't know. Um, it is milled out on the inside of the handle, not on the carbon, but just on the tie side. I think it was easier to show it this way last time yeah let's go like this so you can see the little snake that's kind of popping out there yeah it's all milled on the tie side the carbon side is nothing it's just flat smooth which is kind of fine uh, and I'm assuming that's to uh, kind of make sure the balance is good which let's check the balance over my own flesh I'm getting balance of perfect <laughs> right behind the pivot where you want it. Beautiful knife, beautiful design. Um, you know, for me, the F95 is is my Sebenza as well. I, I love it. It's it's uh, it's great. I love how the tab. It, it's got this little hole here, this little cave for your finger to find when you're going to flip it open. Uh, you know, some people say, oh, it's got a pocket packer, blah blah blah. But if you look at the curve of the handle and how this comes up. It's right in line. Honestly, it doesn't stick up any worse than anything else in your collection. It uh, it looks real good. The only the only flipper that I have that really is kind of hidden, I'd say, or not hidden, but kind of tucked in, would be the uh, Sinkovich stuff. So I'll show you that. You've probably seen this, but you see how that that guy is a little bit smaller on there. I think same thing on the dark just a little smaller same design and then the Kami I think is even smaller so yeah there's the see how small that flipper tab is you know whereas on the quantum they kind of build it into the tip I like how on the F95 
you know, yes, you can make it smaller. The commie's kind of the, you know, the example of how small it can get. But um, the, uh, the quantum, let's grab one here. The quantum, it's kind of built into the tip, right? So when it's built into the tip, I find that it's harder to find. It's also a little further. Some people love it. And honestly, we're nitpicking here, guys. This is so minimal. I, I don't have a problem with it. Some people do. This is a little further back. It's more neon-esque, right? The neon's the same way. If we grab that neon again, how it's kind of just pulled back a little bit. The flipper tab on both is still basically above the pivot, right? A little bit forward on the quantum, so you're going to get a little more leverage there. So just always pay attention to that, you know, relationship between the pivot and the flipper tab because that's going to give you your leverage. When it's further back, that's where all of a sudden it's your your detent starts to feel weak. So this supernatural, right? Doesn't require a lot. I'm flipping this very lightly, but if I put that into the same uh, knife with a with a flipper tab that's pulled back, it's going to feel weak. So if I give that to say that Doctor Death, Doctor Death, I'll show you where the flipper tab is on that one. So remember, pivot here. Now the tab is behind the pivot. Okay. So when that tab is behind the pivot, if I flip it lightly, it'll fail. Right. See? But it's smooth, and if I pull back and I give it a normal flick, you know, it's not a problem. But because it is behind the pivot, it requires a little bit more of a pull, and that's why people think that they have weak detents on the Dr. Death. Fun fact. But um, the F95 doesn't have that problem. It's bread and butter. The, the tab is right on that pivot, and super reliable. It's kind of the medium all-around knife for sure go off in every way it's bread and butter and now you've got bread and butter with snow cap mountains on it with carbon co carbon fiber and an m390 blade super mill beautiful beautiful knife one of my favorites love it okay guys well i think i've jabbed on here a, lo a little too long um, so i'm going to wrap things up there please visit my website bladezilla.ca add me on instagram shoot me a message i love talking knives you know, I love talking, period, it seems, because I'm sitting here for half an hour probably talking about this knife, as usual. And, uh, you know, anytime, to, anytime I can take away from my personal day to talk knives, I definitely appreciate it. Oh, I should also say, that clip, see how the clip leans onto the frame instead of the lock bar? Super important feature. So when it's in your hand, right, you're trying to flip it, if you're holding the back of the clip, it doesn't add pressure to the lock bar. I forgot to mention that. Super important little thing. So, there you go. Okay. Well, thanks for stopping by, guys. Uh, like I said, like, subscribe, share, hit the bell button, talk, whatever, leave a comment. I will definitely reply to all you guys. And uh, and more than anything, I just love to chat. You know, I'm a, a passionate hobby of mine. So, that's it. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Have yourselves a great week, and uh, we'll talk soon. Peace.